you always begin to draw the vertebra. So, let us say this is the vertebra, any thoracic vertebra. You are drawing the diagram of typical intercostal space. So, this is the body of vertebra, you have the vertebral canal over here and you have the two transverse process and the spine. Now, anteriorly what will you draw, which bone will you draw, sternum. So, we have drawn the sternum anteriorly and the body of the thoracic vertebra posteriorly. Now, the first muscle, what is that muscle, outermost muscle? So, let us draw an outline, so that you get a symmetrical diagram. Just try to be as much symmetrical as possible. Now, we have to show external intercostal muscle. What is the extent of the muscle? It begins from here, but as it reaches the costochondral junction, it is replaced by a membrane. So, membrane I am showing in a different color. So, this is the external intercostal muscle. It begins from almost the level of the transverse process or sides of the vertebra. It is this muscle, external intercostal muscle is present throughout the space, but the anteriorly it is replaced by a membrane. This is called external intercostal membrane or anterior intercostal membrane. So, this is about external intercostal muscle. You can draw on both the sides. Now, what about internal intercostal muscle? It begins from the sides of the sternum. So, let us say this is the sternum. Okay. Now, internal intercostal muscle begins from here. This is internal intercostal muscle. But as it reaches the angle of the rib, this is all muscle fibers. When it reaches the angle of the rib, it is replaced by a membrane. This membrane is called internal intercostal membrane, also called posterior intercostal membrane. So, what is the name of this muscle? Internal intercostal muscle that will be replaced by internal intercostal membrane also called posterior intercostal membrane. So, let us shade the muscles because I have drawn double lines. Otherwise, if you find it difficult to draw double lines, you can also draw single line diagrams. You can use single line diagrams also if you are more comfortable with that. So, I have drawn external intercostal muscle and anterior intercostal membrane. Deep to that I have drawn internal intercostal muscle and internal intercostal membrane. Now, we have to draw transversus thoracis. What do you have in transversus thoracis? I told you there is innermost intercostal muscle which occupies only the middle to fourth. Okay? This is the innermost intercostal muscle that is one part of transversus thoracis. What are the other parts of transversus thoracis? This is innermost intercostal muscle. Now, you have sternocostalis muscle, that is one part sternocostalis muscle attached to the sternum and you have subcostalis muscle. So, this is the subcostalis muscle. All the three put together is called transversus thoracis. Now, identify the neurovascular plane. The neurovascular plane lies between internal intercostal muscle and transversus. So, now probably you can draw a typical intercostal nerve in this space. So, do you remember how to draw? A typical intercostal nerve is formed by the union of two roots. So, this is the typical intercostal nerve. This gives rise to a, so this is the tip spinal nerve which gives rise to a dorsal branch. And so, the dors, this is the dorsal primary ramus. If you remember the intercostal, the spinal nerve divides into a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus. The dorsal ramus goes to supply the muscles and the skin in the back. The ventral ramus runs in the costal groove of the corresponding space. It runs in the neurovascular plane. That means, between the internal intercostal muscle and transversus thoracis. And when it reaches the mid axillary line, it gives lateral cutaneous branch and it runs further forwards. And then it comes lateral to the sternum, it perforates, it pierces the two muscles here, it pierces the internal intercostal muscle and anterior intercostal membrane. 
and it terminates by dividing into anterior this is called anterior cutaneous branch the anterior cutaneous branch supplies divides into a medial branch and a lateral branch this is the lateral cutaneous branch that divides into an anterior branch and a posterior branch and this is the dorsal ramus which divides into medial and lateral branch so now you can understand the concept of a dermatome which we have discussed earlier so what is a dermatome it is the area of skin derma it is something to do with the skin it is the area of a skin that is supplied by branches of one spinal nerve one spinal nerve will have a dorsal branch and a ventral branch the dorsal branch supplies the muscles and the skin of the back after that the ventral primary ramus is now called intercostal nerve so that runs in the intercostal space in the costal groove it gives a lateral cutaneous branch and the it terminates as the anterior cutaneous branch so the this area of the skin that is supplied by branches of one spinal nerve put together is called one dermatome okay so now this is just to understand the diagram and this nerve behind this nerve i told you this is what muscle is this sternocostalis muscle you also have the internal thoracic artery here accompanied by the venae comitantes you can draw on both the sides you can draw the nerve and this so this is the internal thoracic artery accompanied by the venae comitantes i told you this lies behind the external intercostal membrane internal intercostal muscle and it lies anterior to this deep to the internal thoracic artery i told you you have the sternocostalis muscle what lies further deep to that you have a fascia which is called endothoracic fascia it's very thin layer of fascia it is just a fascia you have a layer of endothoracic fascia here it's very thin layer and that is further lined by parietal pleura it will further be lined by parietal pleura so this is the diagram showing the contents of typical intercostal space i have drawn the nerve and these arteries only on one side 